Welcome to this chess video. This video we're going to be discussing chess.com's accuracy, which the professional name for this is called CAPS. So what exactly is CAPS? Well, I'll put it on the screen here and you can take a look. Computer Aggregated Precision Score. And it's this little percentage thing over here, which basically shows how well that player did in that game. But far too often, people misinterpret what this statistic actually is and use it as cheating accusations against other players. So I have to make something very clear. This tool is not chess.com's cheat detection and by itself is not really that good at detecting whether someone played fairly. So let's actually explain what this accuracy is in this video. And once you have a better idea, then you can understand how this could be used beneficially or something that isn't as reliable. Okay, so at the very beginning here, we have to start, well, what exactly was CAPS designed for? I really like that accuracy feature a lot, but it was designed mostly for beginners and intermediate players to get a really quick representation of how well they actually did in that game. I think a lot of people take for granted just how many newer players we have in the chess community, and that is really wonderful. And chess.com has literally millions of members and constantly growing every single day. The problem with chess rating is what exactly is chess rating? Like if I tell you you're rated a thousand, right? You tell that to a beginner, they're thinking a thousand out of what, right? Or 1500 out of what? Well, that's actually pretty complicated because rating is on an ELO band, which is a calculus designed to bring down the curve. So you basically can't farm players and get all the way up to grandmaster level in rating. And a lot of beginners are like, what? <laughs> a lot of mathematical terms. So we needed a quick tool and that's where this accuracy comes into play. Most people understand what out of 100 is, right? We've all gone to school, we've had classes, and usually our grades are measured out of 100, as in percent. And so this accuracy statistic tried to imitate that. But what you have to understand is 100%, yeah, it does sound like you got the best move. And although that is not untrue, we have to understand that that is the best move in comparison to the engine you're comparing it to. And the engine you compare it to might actually change. So putting that in simple words, it means that your accuracy score can actually change based on you analyzing with a weaker engine, a stronger engine, or simply an engine that's running at a different depth than when you originally analyzed it. There's also many other factors that go into it. I'm gonna go over a few examples here. And this first example is a game where both me and my opponent definitely had really low accuracy for our ability. We're not gonna analyze the entire game, but I'll breeze through the moves. And what I want you to pay attention to is how many mistakes and blunders there are, as well as missed opportunities and inaccuracies. Of course, so we'll start with some book moves. And again, I'm going pretty quickly intentionally. Our goal is not to analyze this. So while I'm talking, I can just click, but you notice how many mistakes and blunders there are. Just look at all of the different markings here. And this is far from a perfect game. We'll see a lot of mistakes here. Just look at them all. I mean, all in a row here. And a lot of these moves that you see here are actually like the second best move or maybe the third best. They're not necessarily so terrible, but because they're a lot worse than the best move, the computer is calling these moves a mistake. And now we have a string of some decent moves and then we'll get to some more blunders. <laughs> I know we're going extremely quickly, but just by all of the markings, the computer, you would think that this was a really low rated player game. We continue on, some more blunders, the game completely changes there. And then the rest is just kind of sweeping up with the queen, as white is definitely ahead, and just has to convert without losing. And finally, black resigned. So all of that, you would expect this to be extremely low accuracy. And you're not wrong, this accuracy was only in the 60s. You can see the score here. And of course I started with the game of mine because humility is important and it's good to see that not everyone plays perfectly. Now that was in the 60s. I am not rated a grandmaster, but I remember a very famous game that I actually saw from Gary Kasparov. And guess what? His game also in the 60s in accuracy. So what's the difference? Because I am not Gary Kasparov. He is much higher rated player than I am and plays chess on a much deeper level. So the difference is with my game, it was just a regular game with positional things, and I was playing the second best move a lot of the time, and so was my opponent, and we would miss the same idea constantly and things like that. In Gary Kasparov's game, on the other hand, it was very tactical, and so there's a lot more nuances there where the computer may prefer one route, and Kasparov chooses a move that is a little bit more dynamic in nature, something a human opponent is more likely to miss, and gives Kasparov better winning chances. So both of us were not playing the best moves, but his made a lot more sense, whereas mine was just not that great of a game. Now let's go do a different example here. 
Now we'll show one where I had a really high accuracy. But once again, I did not play particularly well. And so when you start to see these differences, you'll realize why inaccuracy is not the most reliable statistic. Now this game was a miniature, so it's going to be a lot shorter in moves than the other one. My accuracy was over 95%, and my opponent's was a lot less. And so we're going to see a very common pattern here, and that's why I show this as an example. So we play the first two moves. And unlike the other game, we didn't keep blundering. And so after we play some moves here, I'd like to pay some attention to the first mistake of the game. And so here we are about equal, and bishop captures f5 is the first mistake. And unlike the other game where we had so many, this is actually critical. It looks like a very simple idea. Just traded, right? What's the problem there? And yeah, it doesn't look good that he's helped my knight develop to a better square. But why is this game deciding? Well, at the higher level, sometimes lesser and lesser mistakes can decide the games. Just imagine if you have two players who are both rated 1,000, and one of them hangs her queen on, like, move 4 or 5. The other player sees it, and he takes it. Pretty much any move they play after that is going to be winning for the side that has the queen. And so it's easier to play good moves when you have a good position. And this is kind of the same concept here to a much lesser extent. They try to kick my knight away, and I play this check. And white is already in trouble. The reason I bring this up is because we are only on move 7, and when one side blunders very early, in this case they trade and then trying to kick my knight, but in the other verbal example I gave it was losing the queen, it's really easy for the opponent to find really good moves, and harder for the opponent, in this case white, to defend. And so that's going to naturally boost my accuracy higher than what it should be, and lower their accuracy because it's harder for them to find good moves. We continue here. c5 is a really dangerous threat which they actually fell for, and that is actually this move and just checkmate. It's a very short miniature, it's not really that special, but apparently it's over 95% accuracy. And although it's a good game, it really shouldn't be that high. And that's one big flaw of this accuracy statistic. It doesn't take into account how difficult those moves are to find for either you or your opponent. If it's a very complicated, or especially if the position is very tactical in nature, and very sharp, then only one or two good moves really exist in the position and you must find those moves and everything else is more or less a blunder. And that's in stark contrast to a really positional game or one with a long end game because there there's a lot of good moves that you could play. Not necessarily the best move but it's not going to lower your accuracy as much. And so in those types of positions it is easier to get higher percentage scores. So how can we use accuracy in a useful way? For individual games, it can give you a good, decent report card glance and how well you did. For each person, if you scored, let's say, 80% in a game, then that's roughly a B, right? If you got like a 90% or higher, maybe that's like an A. And so that's kind of like a quick identifier you can use to estimate how well you did in the game. And a quick analysis can tell you how many blunders you had and kind of where you can analyze and learn from your mistakes. That's really all this tool is for. It was a quick glance. It wasn't a really deep look into how accurate you were. But we'll get to that a little bit later. Here we have my chess.com insights page under statistics. I think you need membership of a certain level to have insights. But if you do have that feature, then there's a lot of things you can look up. And one of them is your accuracy. So if I scroll down here, this is only for rapid, by the way. My average accuracy is about 80%. I know you can't see this cutoff over here when I lose. Um, but that's in the 70s, and over here it's in the 30s. But for the entire game, whether I win, lose, or draw, roughly 80% is what my accuracy is. And so some of the time I'm going to be higher, like 90s, and some of the time I'm going to be lower, like 70s. This is my average overall. So if you have the insights feature, you can just look up what your average accuracy usually is. The more games that you played, the more reliable the statistic is. And then whenever you analyze the game in the future, you can take a look at that cap score, the accuracy rating, and see how high or low it was compared to your average. That'll tell you whether you played a little higher than your form or a little lower than your form. And of course, it's an estimate. Like I said, it depends a lot on the types of positions and how easy those moves are to find. But it's a quick glance to help you determine how good you're playing for your level. Because what is a good move for a Grandmaster is not what's a good move for a 1,000 level player. But of course, these are just my games. Let's take a look at a game from a friend of mine, and you'll get a better idea of what I'm referring to here. So this friend of mine is slightly lower rated than me, but pretty close in rating. And this was also a short game, but I'm just going to skip to move 14. 
And so just jumping into this game, we already have a mistake at this point. And again, these are two pretty high rated players. We have 1900 and we have 1700. If you recall from this chess video here that I made, the average chess rating is only in the 600s. And so here we have white playing a missed opportunity. We have an inaccuracy. Next we have a blunder, a missed opportunity again. Inaccuracy coming up, same thing as we trade. Another one from white and for black. And then the game decisive blunder because this allows this really nice idea which my friend found. And then it's just simply checkmate when they take the queen with the rook. Then rook captures d1 will be checkmate. So the first half of the game was pretty much book moves. And then we teleported into the spot where we were looking at with that mistake. And then all the moves that followed. What would you assume their accuracy would be? Now again, just to reiterate, these are really high rated players. But we can actually see from the accuracy that my friend had 80% and their opponent had 68%. Now, I don't know what is average for these players. You would have to go to their insights page and see what they usually score. But based on their ratings, you might assume that someone around 1900 would probably get around high 70s, maybe up to 80% accuracy. And my friend did just that in this game, despite how many mistakes and blunders there actually were. Now, part of it is the nature of the position. But the reason I showed someone else's game is to highlight the fact that I mentioned earlier. Part of the accuracy is determined by your rating and the rating of your opponent. Because of course, for them to play really good moves, it will be harder for you to find good moves. Imagine if your opponent was hanging their queen literally every single move, and you kept missing it. Eventually, you're going to find it, right? That'd be a pretty low accuracy game, but when you do find it, then you have a very good chance of finding better moves. Compare that to two grandmasters playing who almost never make errors, and so it's going to be very difficult for them to even get a minuscule advantage. So the accuracy needs some way to try and reflect that difference. A lot of it is mathematical and very technical, and I don't know the exact details of how chess.com calculates it. But accuracy from one game is definitely not indicative of cheating. Now, if you were to compare accuracy and average it out, aggregate it over many games, like 100 or 1,000, maybe now you're getting a little bit closer. But even that is really primitive in describing if someone's actually cheating or not. Now, let's get to two players who are actually title players and see their cap scores. What kind of accuracy do they have? So here I have this game pulled up. This was none other than chess.com's CCO, or chief chess officer, Danny Wrench. And so let's take a look at this game accuracy, starting with me finding that game in the archive. So I filtered the game in the archive, put in the parameters, and came up with only one game that this matches. And so we can see here, this is their accuracy from that game. Now let me bring up this identical game, which was a Title Tuesday game from the year 2020. And you can see that in their video, a screenshot where Danny Wrench was talking about caps. We can zoom in on the game, which is why it's a little bit blurry, and see that the accuracy is actually a little bit different. And again, compare the accuracies. So notice that the accuracy is actually slightly changing each time. And so why is that? It is the exact same game, and it's the exact same players. So you would think the accuracy would be the same. Well, the reason why is because they're getting their information from different sources. It is the same engine, but remember, we're comparing accuracy by how close their moves match the engine. And that depends on the engine depth and the type of engine that is used to analyze. So when you get a quick analysis on chess.com, you hit the game report and analyze, it only takes like a second for each move to analyze, and you get a very quick accuracy and game report for that game. But that is actually running off the chess.com server. If you want a longer, more in-depth and deeper accuracy, then you have to increase the engine depth and wait much longer to analyze that one game. As the engine runs deeper, it'll get more accurate with its assessment and fluctuate less often. But in doing so, the percentages might actually change slightly. And there's other things you can do to slightly alter these and get the statistics more accurate based on what you're applying. Now, of course, I'm not on chess.com's fair play team, but what I speculate is that their chess.com cheat detection takes a lot of the deeper stats from insights and a lot of hidden mathematical statistics that we don't even have access to. Combines all of that together and you get a much more advanced version of what we have as our game report. Now here, this is just public information I'm showing. This is my own chess.com insights, the same area where we got the stats for my accuracy average. Here we have my average accuracy based on game shape. So remember it depends because I mentioned how Kasparov could be very tactical. Positional games might be easier to get higher accuracy in some ways. And so here you can see the different percentages that I have for each game shape. 
And then here, you have my results for that game shape. I think chess.com uses something very similar and calculates her accuracy based on the type of game that was played. Chess.com even ranks her accuracy based on what opening you play, what piece you moved, and a whole bunch of other things which you can mess around with if you have the insights feature. Now I know that this isn't perfect because the screen's a little bit small cutting off the very right side here, but you get the general idea of how advanced the statistics could be. And that is just public knowledge that they release in the chess.com insights. So I'm sure their cheat detection is a lot more in depth and probably takes similar things into consideration as they calculate. It is no exaggeration that I believe chess.com's cheat detection is literally the best in the world for online chess. Does that mean it is perfect? No, of course not. But I think they're improving every single day. And overall, I really trust online chess, despite a lot of the accusations people make in the online world, not just chess.com, but everywhere, with the real epidemic of online cheating. I don't think the cheating is as bad as people make it out to be. It is a serious problem, but we have rising cheat detection that's getting better and better that's really helping catch these players. Now, the purpose of this video, of course, was to try and explain all of this accuracy a little bit more in-depth. The assumption is that Grandmasters play really close to perfect, which is really close to 100, and lower-rated players will be much less. And although, from an average standpoint, that is true, individual games will naturally be much closer to 100%, even for lower-rated players sometimes. And for Grandmasters, they'll be a lot lower in other situations based on the game. So that was the truth about Chess.com's accuracy. There's been a few times where I've actually gotten 100% accuracy, so I know it's possible. But in those positions, always my opponent blunders really early. Or my moves are extremely natural to make. Compare that to a Grandmaster who's playing, and that is extremely hard to get high accuracy. Now just look at this game, which is just insane, I think. And that is none other than Mikhail who has 100% accuracy, which is just mind-blowing to me. But similar to my example with Kasparov, Tal had many games that were in like the 50s or 60s in accuracy. So of course what makes these players so good is their average, the fact that they can score these higher percentages much more often and much more consistently. I hope everyone found this video helpful, and I'll see you in the next chess video.